All right, welcome to City Cooks, everybody. It's not every day on this show where we can say that we're going to do something that we've never done before, but Mark Hills from Hills Foods is going to help us do that today, aren't you, Mark? That's right. Today it's uh, kangaroo from Down Under. What are you doing to us? What are you well, doing to us? We're actually going to be eating kangaroo? Absolutely. This is something that uh, I've been trying to get into the country for a long time. And we were, in October of this year, we were successful after many years of working with the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. We we're okay. allowed to bring it in and sell it as uh, fine quality meat it is. Don't you have a big image problem with eating kangaroo? I mean, when you told me this this morning, <laughs> I thought, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. I mean, is, would a lot of people have that reaction? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, uh, there is a certain segment of the population that may not understand it. But when you look into the, the, the facts associated with the production of meat, uh, all meat in the world, and when I see what's been going on with the kangaroo industry in Australia, I look at that as something very positive because it's natural, the animal is prolific, there's millions of them, and the quality of the meat is exceptional, and it's nutritious, okay. and it tastes good. Outside of Australia, though, it's not widely known that you can eat kangaroo. I didn't, I mean, I didn't know that. Actually, outside of Australia, Canada is the last, one of the last countries to actually be able to bring it in. Russia is one of the biggest users. Uh, France, Belgium, Germany, uh, Italy, where they know and enjoy game all the time. Right. They've been getting it for decades. Where does it stack up on the price scale? How expensive is uh, it? Very similar to venison. Oh, it is. Okay. Yes. And the benefits are, you were saying it's nutritious? Uh, very, is it very lean? Is it low fat? Or? Very lean, less than 1% fat. Oh. And, uh, well, you'll see when we cook this today, it's going to cook up similar to venison, taste similar, but probably a notch up in my opinion. Really? And, uh, well, the, the proof's in the pudding, as they say. <laughs> or the kangaroo. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, what cuts have you brought with you here? Maybe you should run through what kind of cuts you can get, too. What, we're, what I brought today was the uh, loin, which is a more tender cut, which is very quick to prepare which we can do fairly quickly here. I should okay. get this pan yeah, on the so door, by the way. Yeah, so that one right there. There we uh, go. That's the one. Okay. And uh, we're going to rub this with pepperberry. This is, uh, Bush Dreams is a, a spice from, uh, uh, pepperberry is a spice from Australia okay. from the outback. Show that to everybody there, yeah. And uh, this is a, a blend of herbs with some salt that uh, makes for a beautiful rub. We sell this to the restaurant trade in, in Vancouver. This meat looks very lean. Oh, well, it, it is. It but is. But it doesn't get lean. dry? It doesn't get tough? Oh, well, it can if you overcook it. Right. You, you have to, like with most game, you have to treat it with finesse. Okay. Just, uh, we're going to put a little... Well, coming over to your house for dinner it. must be really adventurous. It Because you never is. know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> My friends really do enjoy to come over and uh, <laughs> What is experiment. Mark going to be feeding us tonight? You never they, know what's going to be on his dinner table. They have a lot of fun with it, <laughs> and so do I. Now, we got some heat on there. We're going to need a little oil in the pan. Okay. It's a little olive oil and uh, maybe now, just a touch of butter. When was the first time you tried this? And can you remember it as being something you really wanted to bring in to the country, that you liked it a lot? Or? Well, I was, I was interested in it years ago because uh, I'd heard that it was a very good protein. And uh, when I inquired back in 1987 to say, well, I'd like to bring this in, and uh, it, it wasn't legal for importation for no particular reason other than no one asked, I think. Right. 1987, <laughs> did you say? Yes. It's taken that many years? It took that long, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, patience. A lot of form filling. A lot of, of form filling. <laughs> that kind of thing. But it was years ago with uh, Culinary Team Canada that I, I purposely brought in a load. I was told I can't sell it, but I can bring it in and do some sampling. So uh, with... Uh, Culinary Team Canada and the help of Bruno Marti at La Belle he right. uh, was very... Uh, he gave them this to work with and they... And we had a big party at the Aussie Consulate and it uh, it took off from there. Nice. Okay, so you're going to put that right in there? Set that right in there. Okay. And are these three... These are three different pieces of loin, right? This is not all off the one. Actually, the, well, yeah, this will be off of uh, one and a half. Really? Anyway. That is a lot of meat, that more than I thought. just the one segment. But there's a significant amount of meat on, on a kangaroo, but uh, we have other cuts with us, as you can see in this okay, bag. Okay, yeah, what here. have you brought here? This so. is what they refer to as the rump, which is on, on the, off the hind leg. Okay. And uh, a little later on, I'm going to show you some of the, the tail meat that we're doing in a consomme. Tail meat, too? Yes, it's kind of like an oxtail. I would imagine so. Okay. So what are we going to do to this? So this... Uh, the pan's not as hot as I would like, but it's, uh, it's yeah, coming sorry along. sorry about that. We're searing... This on all sides. Okay. I should have a pair of tongs too, and I've. Uh, well, let me know how this works here. So we sear that on all sides, and then what do we have to do? And we're just going to turn that 
imagine this sizzling a little faster. It's getting there. It's and getting there. What we might do while that's cooking, yeah. slowly, is uh, get this other part. We'll get our sauce going. Okay. Turn that one on too? Yeah. And what's our sauce going to consist of? Now, this is, uh, because this is a nice lean meat and game, again, it, it marries up well with uh, fruit. So what I thought I'd do today is do a little uh, cherry. Okay. This is a, a local Bing cherry. These are pitted. And here's a little cherry juice. And we've got a little... Black currant jam. Black currant jam. And uh, we're going to use a little bit of butter as well. Okay. So That's really starting to sizzle along there. That's too, good. It? Okay. What we're doing here is taking about two minutes on each side. Okay. So it'll take six to eight minutes to, to finish completely. And then we're going to take it off and let it rest for about five minutes. Okay. And then we'll slice it and serve it on and top. And rare is obviously the way to go with that because you've got to be very careful. Don't go beyond medium rare with whenever you're cooking game. Okay. Any kind of game? Is that okay? Uh, generally speaking, that's the case. Because it's very lean, and once if you overcook game, this happens a lot with families who fathers go out and hunt or whatever, and they come back and they, they cook it like they would roast beef, and all of a sudden it, it, it tastes like liver or gamey. Yeah. But if you're having it rare, you won't get that. Oh. It's very unusual to get that with it. You have to deal with a lot of people who had that experience probably yes. when they were younger and they get turned off of it completely, right? We okay, do. so once this is all ready to go, what are we putting in there? Put the cherries put in? in the cherries. If you okay. could put a spoon of the uh, jelly, the red, uh, oh, the the black jelly. Current jelly. Okay. I'll just put... Now, what would you serve with this? That's well, your main course, obviously. That's your main course. Right? With this, uh, your favorite veg, the potato, or wild rice, uh, some noodles. Oh, wild rice would taste good with that, wouldn't it? Oh, it would be a great yeah. accompaniment to it. Okay, so the yeah. cherries are just uh, getting tossed. Turn that again. Uh, this is browning up nicely now. Okay. So these are just warming up with the red fruit jelly. And then what do we have to put in there? Well, what else do we have? Oh, a little bit of the juice. Okay. Put a little bit of that in there, just to... Reduce that down. Now the butter will... Sort of let that all come together? Yeah. Oh, okay. you know what we need is a little bit of cinnamon. Is there a cinnamon no. stick there somewhere? Uh, no, or a sense. sprinkle of cinnamon? Okay. Just a little, little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, that's good. That's all it needs. Okay. And uh, it should... Be all coming together. Well, you know what we should do then. What should we do? We should probably take a break. Okay. <laughs> We're going to let all this cook up. I can't wait. I, well, I'm really excited to try this because I've never tried this before. So this will be good. Yes, we're going to take a break. This will all be ready. We're also getting into some other kangaroo dishes as well. So stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to City Cooks, everybody. Yes, it's true. We're cooking kangaroo today, believe it or not. That's right. It's hard. For, it's still kind of hard for me to believe that we're doing that. Well, but you'll, you'll understand why when you taste this. Okay, this, so this is our kangaroo loin that's all done. That's right. We're just going to slice this. It's been resting. Okay. You see, that it's quite rare. Oh, hang on. Turn it around this way so we can see what it looks oh, like. There, there we, we go. go. It is and quite rare. A little uh, slice across the grain, as you can see, it's almost, it's so delicate, it's, it's really hard to explain without actually biting into it, but you're going to see this right now, Okay. as we put just a couple of these pieces on with the cherries. Here. You really can't wait till the end of the show for me to taste it, well, right? You really want to, like, have you, me eat it now. When you have this, you're going to see right Should away Should I just why. eat that piece, but I don't want to ruin that? How about oh, I... You could, sure. Why don't I just do that, okay? Well, That's going to be a little more crispy than the center piece. That's okay. But the flavor's there. The pepperberry on the outside with the uh, cherry and cinnamon. Nice combination. That's very good. Mm. And very tender, very, very sweet and delicious. That's would you really compare good. that to venison? It's usually what yeah, most people say. Yeah, I would compare that to venison. It's almost a little bit gamier than venison is. Or maybe because that's the first time I've had it. And this is wild. Whereas mm -hmm. the venison typically is farm, yeah. so you're going to get that bit of an edge to it. There is a bit of an edge to that, but it's very, very good, very tender. Okay, so what are we doing with the kangaroo this time? Oh, we're going to take the uh, tail, which has been chopped very similar to uh, oxtail, 
And okay. we can put that right into this pot. Okay, is this like one whole tail that you have here? Uh, actually, or is, uh, that's a lot of pieces. For this particular type of dish, we're using the smaller end, whereas the uh, larger end of the tail would be used in a dish like a osobuco. Okay. So this we're just going to transfer right in here. We're so you just got some oil that's here, and oil and butter? Uh, oil, a little butter, and okay. uh, we're just going to just dump this in here. It's going to brown. We're going to sear it all around. This is the, uh, because this is such a, a tough part of the, a tough cut, we're going to sear this off and braise it. Long, slow cooking, right? Long, slow cooking. Okay, now tell me price-wise, how does kangaroo stack up? Price-wise, uh, this this piece here, we'd wholesale probably around $10 a kilo. Okay. Uh, whereas the loin would be around $40 a kilo. That's oh. wholesale. Ouch, okay. So that's uh, buying uh, case lots to restaurants. Is it so, safe to double that if you were going to buy it for the consumer? I would or? suggest you got to be at least 30% more. So a loin was probably going to cost you about $60 a kilo. That's which a lot of money. Actually, in the scheme of things, it's very similar to venison and ostrich and the other cuts. It's, yeah. uh, and the fact that this is a wild uh, wild product, too, right. uh, it makes for a more expensive harvest. Than Obviously, bread. it's a special occasion kind of thing, right? Where you want to try something a little bit different. That's right. That's right. Okay, so that just gets browned up, and then what else can we put in there with that? Now, as this browns, we could be adding these veg. As okay. a matter of fact, you can... Go ahead, and why don't you tell me? Can I start with the leaves? Yeah, just toss them in one okay. after the other. We're just going to brown all this together now. In the because of the uh, the time we have, I might uh, consider sautéing these in a separate pan okay. and putting it all together. But you can put them all in like this. Okay, too. so just leeks, carrots, celery, onions, onions, and, and then you've got some spices here. Do there's you want a to clove of garlic. Yeah. And there's a bay leaf, a couple of sprigs of parsley, yeah. and one clove. So this is a, a standard uh, consomme stock that okay. you'd see uh, oh, for beef and game and chicken. Right. Well, we also have some juniper berries. Those Again, are going in too. Yes, juniper berries uh, are, are a wonderful complement to this because of the uh, the flavor of the juniper. That uh, well, you'll see it when we taste it. it well, it's out. interesting. You put pepperberry. Mm -hmm. on the on the loin so is it is that really a compliment i guess to well pepperberry uh primarily because the pepperberry is uh, indigenous to australia right and it's nice to use the indigenous ingredients when we're using the kangaroo uh the the bc uh cherries is just a uh, nice touch just to a nice touch mark but is there anything that you've come across where you say i i can't eat that that's just something i can't do i uh I don't think so. Because you seem to make your living out of trying and selling stuff that uh, people didn't even know you could buy. Well, I'm curious about different foods, and uh, it's, I guess, that uh, that uh, desire to uh, to learn and create new dishes and find new proteins. Uh, it keeps me testing and trying a lot of different things that a lot of other people might not go for, but uh, they I have will a lot once, of fun with it. They will once you talk them into it. Okay, so this gets ground up, and then what happens? Okay, so... This is nice and brown all over. Oh, yeah. It sure is. It sure is. <laughs> and, oh, we forgot a little bit of time. Okay. Uh, I'd use fresh, but uh, couldn't find any this morning in a hurry. And the, we got your water? cold water because we're making uh, your standard slow stock as opposed to a quick stock where you might add hot water and do this very quickly. You don't want to cheat like that. No, we don't want to do that. Okay. So we're going to, my recipe says about a liter and a half of water. Okay. But I'm just going to get this to cover it, which is, yeah, it's just about About all there. you need, right? That's all we need. And how so long is this going to take them? Now, this is going to come to a boil. Right. And as soon as it comes to a boil, we're turning it right down to simmer. Okay. And for three and a half hours, it'll sit there. Three and a half hours. Simmering okay. gently. Now, you could put a lid on. You don't have to. I like to put it just kind of a like skew that? like that. Okay. And that'll sit there. Now, in the... Uh, but that's the finished product? Oh, no, no, leave oh. it there. I think we should take a break. Oh, Just leave, save okay. some of the magic. Yeah. Save some of the magic. That you way people it. have something to look forward to when they come back from the commercial break, which we're going to take. We will show you the finished uh, kangaroo tail when we come back, so don't go away.
find out more about some of the different and unique products that Mark Hills has been talking about today, we'll check out Hills Foods Limited. You'll find them in Coquitlam. You can get them a call to find out more. You can also check out their website, hillsfoods.com. So anybody can just come in and uh, get some of the stuff? Yeah, we encourage people to come in because uh, the unique variety we have isn't available probably in any store. That's we're, right. we're trying to get them out there, but it's not that easy to get retail space. So. We certainly encourage people to come in and visit us. Okay, so now this is going to require a bit of work. That's why I'm rolling up my sleeves. So yes. what are we doing? Well, as you may remember, before we left, <laughs> we had some consomme on the go. That's right. actually a stock. It's not. Uh, it's on its way to becoming a consomme. And I have to uh, lift this up. Yeah, here. if you lift that up, we have a cheesecloth here okay. over, over a fine strainer. Now this is warm, so be careful. I'm going to just drop this into here. Okay. And this, the cheesecloth is going to allow us to keep this very, very clear. We want the liquid to stay very clear, right? Yeah, that's right. We'll put this pot over here. Woo! Now, I can move this plate. Okay. I just set it on there. Just, that's okay. Are you sure? There's yeah. a lot more liquid left no, in there, Mark. That's, okay. Trust me. Okay. We I'm trusting you on that one. <laughs> So this smells really good. So what are we doing with that now? Well, this I'm going to transfer into this pot right here. Well, hang here. on. We'll put that up there. And the front. That one there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Here we go. Now, you'll notice on here there's uh, some fat. There's the shiny stuff. And uh, what I like to do, it's a little trick I learned just recently from a chef friend of mine. Okay. This is a little trick you can try. And when you want to get the fat off the top, okay. typically you would start. You start skimming it, wouldn't you? With the skimming with the ladle. Just like this, right? In a counterclockwise motion, and you turn back to clockwise to get it going for you, or vice versa. Yes. So, but what you find is that uh, at the uh, at that point, there's still some you just can't quite see. I know get. it drives me crazy. And you can just drop that on there. Really? And it'll all soak up that top oil. I just pull it back. Look at that. Oh, look at that. It did take most of it off, didn't it? Uh, if you're uh, more patient, you could probably clear that right up. But we're not that patient, so <laughs> we're just going to put it into the yeah, pot and get oh cooking Oh, yeah, here. that pot's hot. Now, you see there's no residue there because it's all back in the cheesecloth. So we'll just let that rest. And okay. here, if we get the tongs, we'll pull one of these tail pieces out. Right. And I'll show you just quickly here. And this is all part of the same dish. I mean, this is... I'm going to use these. It's quite hot. Yeah, this is uh, we're, what we're doing with the uh, tailpiece here. We're just pulling some of the meat. Is out. there different types of kangaroo meat? Are there different types of kangaroos that? Oh, uh, there's probably over 50 different species of kangaroo, but uh, there's only four or five that are used for commercial harvest. Okay. Uh, and out of those, uh, people always ask, well, how many are there? Well, the last count I heard back in 2002, there was 54.8 million kangaroos roaming around, and. Wow. The five species that are harvested for their meat are, are among the more prolific. Of are those. they grown commercially for just this reason, or are they actually wild? It's, it's all wild. There's no farming of kangaroo. You'll see them in zoos and so forth, but there are no kangaroo farms. And very, uh, very strictly controlled by the Australian Wildlife Department. They have uh, serious fines, up to a quarter million dollars if you're caught poaching. And uh, 10 years in jail if you start messing around with the kangaroo harvest. Wow. So they're very serious. And uh, so it is just like uh, hunting for moose or venison or bear here in uh, Canada. Well, it's quite different, actually, in the sense that this is a commercial harvest and there's professional hunters that are licensed by the government to go out on the shoot. And uh, it's Is it almost their way of keeping the a hold of the population as well? Because uh, they, they, they certainly like respect they the population. They, they'd like to be culling more because it, it, in some cases it still is a pest. Yeah. And uh, with the advent of water, uh, so much access to water now with all the cattle and sh uh, sheep farming in Australia, right. the kangaroo populations are just climbing like mad. Exploding. Men. They've never had it so good with all the water access they have. Okay, so. So I'm just going to take skim that off last a little bit, bit more fat there. Okay. Put that in here. And what I want to do is finish this with a li nice little sherry. Okay. Which uh, will give that a whole new depth of flavor. Now we're really done. Are we really done? Uh, okay, well you just got to finish up a few I, things. I Wait. Okay. We'll take a break. <laughs> Mark's always like two steps ahead of me. We'll take a break because you're going to really present this beautifully and we're going to take a look and try some very unique dishes when we come back. So stay with us. We have more here on City Cooks.
<laughs> Welcome back to City Cooks, everybody. I'm giving Mark a hard time. I said, let me get this straight. We cooked that dish for four hours, and this is what we end up with, is a little shot glass and some kangaroo meat in a container. What is this? Well, that's just the, the tail. It, uh, we've taken it out and diced it up. Right. It's, it's more, it's like a garnish on your consomme. Kangaroo consomme, and here we have a kangaroo consomme shooter, which we finished with just a touch of sherry. Okay. Which uh, really rounds this off nicely, so uh, cheers. Okay, when do we get to eat the meat part? Right after this. Oh, really? Oh, that's oh, good. Isn't that rich? That is really good. That's, that's very rich. four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say. Sure, if I'm eating it somewhere else, that'd be good. <laughs> it's nice to savor it, though. You, you don't have to shoot it back. But typically, if you were having something like this at home, there's some in the bottom of this one, too. Did you want to taste some? Yeah, I do actually want to. Just yeah. a little tiny taste of the... Just, uh, it's quite an intensely flavored meat. Oh, that okay. sure is. If you were serving this at home for, you know, pre-dinner uh, course... You'd serve it just like that. that. That's all you need, just a little bit. And uh, the meat garnish, a little bit of parsley. But what Mark, we that was really good. Oh. That was really, really oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, oh. And this is the, tell us earlier what we did here. This well, this is, is the loin that we sauteed earlier. It's been right. resting, and we've sliced it all uh, thinly. And yeah. you see that it's, it's still rare. Yeah. And I'm going to put the cherry mixture here right in the center just to be able to dip each slice as we... Uh, because we've been kind of oh, yeah. digging into that as we've been going along here. And that is very, very tasty. Are you going to put that right on top? Right on top. That's nice. Nice final touch color. there. So there you have it, a sautéed uh, loin of kangaroo with a pepperberry rub and, and BC cherries. And this was the, the consommé. Consommé of kangaroo tail. Is that what the dish is called, consommé of kangaroo tail? Actually, it's called uh, consommé of kangaroo. <laughs> That's good, too. But it works. Did you make this at home for a dinner party? Uh, actually, uh, this is the uh, first time that I've made the consomme. I made it last night, so I'd be ready for today. Good job. And uh, I'm, I was very impressed with the flavor. And uh, this I've done many times. As a matter of fact, uh, we had this uh, dish at the Royal Vancouver Yacht Club just last week with a group, and they were just blown away. I took this up to the Arctic where we the big muskox harvest yeah. last week. Good and stuff. just for fun for the Eskimos, they loved it. Well, thank you, Mark. Thanks for watching, everybody. We learned a lot about kangaroo. We'll see you next time on City Cooks. Now you can have another piece of that. Absolutely. Go for it.